Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I am Dan Sams. And you have been lucky enough, blessed enough to tune in to yet another episode of the From Concealment Podcast. Mm -hmm. Clearly a sign of God's favor on your life. (laughs) On your life. (laughs) That's right. Clearly, your if oh, your man. ears are being uh, are being blessed right now in this way, clearly you can look to the Lord above and say, uh, "You are not forgotten. Uh, he loves you enough that you get to hear our voices today." <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So, uh, so before we get to some gun talk, which we have a little yeah. bit of gun talk, we got it. We got all kinds of talk. I mean, we got so much, man. There's there's always something else to talk about, like. If this is 2020. There is so much to talk about every day. There's there's something that we could that's just a game changer to talk about. Man, we we didn't even bring up. We could talk about what happened in in Lebanon. Man, stuff that's going right. down there. It was like somebody's like that Timothy McVeigh guy. He had Dude, a thing going on, and then the Lebanese are like, see, "Let's try the same thing." Did you Crazy. see the memes going on on Facebook? They were so bad, I could not repost them. But I was yeah. laughing my head off, yeah. especially when they had Joe Dirt. Hey, do uh, you got any uh, <laughs> scooter doodles? And like he goes off and, oh, you got that, right? It just <laughs> blows up the whole warehouse. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. Yeah, too, which, too many people died to reshare that. But yeah, yeah, that it was, really, that's a really sad situation, but something shady. At the very least, the just like neglecting that much ammonium nitrate, like just leaving it for seven years. That's just something, by the way, that causes me to ask serious question marks, but in a best case scenario, that's being real sloppy. Right. Right. And then next to a fireworks factory, <laughs> right? Like, come on. It's like, that's in the, like, we surely we shouldn't do this. And um, yeah, but I, I've seen some of the videos. I we're in a world now where you can't, even trust a video hardly, but I've seen uh, now two different videos that sure look like there was something coming out of the sky hitting that building. Oh, no kidding. I've seen, I've seen two different ones from two different angles. And I'm like, this could be Photoshopped because it is kind of, no matter how you right. cut it, it's blurry, whatever. Yeah. But like one of them, they're like, that sure looks like, like a, an aircraft in the air. Like something's there and something comes out of it. And, and then we, Man, that was a serious, that was a serious explosion, man. Interesting. Yeah, but I didn't we see do that have, stuff. We do have to acknowledge though that ammonium nitrate it blows up like that. Like, I mean, it it makes right. a crater like that. Yeah, and, and it was what it, they said in at the Oklahoma City bombing was something like was it two tons? And I think they were storing something like twenty seven hundred tons in in Beirut. Like that's it. Yeah, it it makes sense that that can make a hole that big. Um, yeah, but man, why would you be just storing that there? Oh, I got so many questions, man. Anyway, we, that's not even what we were going to talk about today, but dude, welcome to the world. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. It's yeah. like, you, yeah. I was, I was joking with you right before the, uh, the, uh, podcast. Cause I saw this meme on Facebook. It wasn't even a meme. Actually, it was a buddy's comment. And he goes, well, it's day 144 of 14 days to flatten the curve because here in California, we are still shut down. Like you can't go to the malls. The malls are shut down. The only malls that are open right now are outdoor malls. So my wife who goes to the mall every Sunday, like she, her, her mother, the kids, they all go to the mall. She was like, yeah, we're stuck between the Irvine spectrum and fashion Island because those are the only two that are open right now. It's just, and then, and then, dude, it's like, on one hand, we have people who are saying, okay, enough is enough. And so you cannot eat inside restaurants in California. Yeah, man. So they have put up tents in the parking lot and tables in the parking lot, and you can do outdoor dining. 
explain to me the logic between the COVID virus cannot transfer to you outside, but it can inside a building. And then on top of it all, there is a restaurant in Huntington Beach that got shut down by a Huntington Beach City Council because they said they didn't have enough parking when they converted their parking lot oh. into a dine-in oh facility. Oh, my gosh. This is how evil it is here. It's like people are, are done, and yet we have so many bootlickers who are just going along with it. I, I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. Well, it, man, it just makes me mad. It, we have it. We, it's just not nearly as bad here, but it's still a pain. Um, hey, your governor tested positive <laughs> and then tested negative like hours later. How awesome is that? That was the best because I'm like, and a, you know, of course they're saying, oh, that's the quick and dirty test that's not as reliable. And I'm like, so then why are you giving it to us? Right. Like, you're going to, you would quarantine somebody for 14 days on a positive, but because he's the governor, that tyrant didn't have to. He just got to take the other test. And I'm like, oh. so, that, well, so what that means is there are plenty of unreliable tests out there. We, like, Flunty. let's just acknowledge. So that means, so I put that with, and here I always, I always like to preface this and say, the virus is real. People are dying. It is sad. Like, I recognize it's a real thing. I'm not over here pretending the virus it's not is real. real. Not many people are dying, but people are dying. People are dying. Not many, but now we know that like pe- actual deaths are being mislabeled yep. uh, as as COVID nineteen. We know that the tests now are unreliable. the The numbers you know you hear different numbers on things. But man, you're just doing the math. A lot of these, we're talking about a 99.9% survival rate. Like that's, that's not too bad. You know, like everybody who dies, it's sad, but like, cool. This is, uh, lots of us are looking around saying like, this is really ridiculous. Like, what are we doing? Right. Shutting down a country over this. So Shutting yeah, but we've said this so many times. Over this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I were talking this morning and I was like, Part of me feels like come November, all of a sudden, everything's going to get magically better. Oh, I was thinking the same thing. If, if the Democrats win, it's going to get If they better. win. And, I, and she's like, oh, yeah. really? I was thinking, you know, it wouldn't matter. And I'm like, I don't know. They no. hate Trump so much. I could see yeah. them like, we're going to grind this thing for the next four years. Yeah, they might. I could see that happening. Yeah. Well, and of course, like part of this is they're trying to get their election out of it. Right. Um, it, you know. I wonder if uh, right now Hillary is just so pissed that she didn't run. Yeah. No, she's pissed. She didn't think of this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's like, man, I've been, I've been playing the suicide them games so long. I've been thinking the small numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been thinking the massive shut down the world numbers. <laughs> this Fauci guy comes along with his global pandemic. He's a legend. <laughs> what, yeah. You know, if she gets, If she gets put on there as the vice president, then you know Biden will never serve a single day as president. It will not happen. Uh, I already feel sad for him for like, because I mean, it's it is elder abuse. Well, it doesn't really matter who wins the election. Joe Biden will never serve a single day as president. Even if he wins, he'll never serve a day. It's it's already like elder abuse that they're even putting him through this. But if if he has Hillary as his running mate, like. She's going to suicide him like day one. Like he's not even going to get a chance to swear in. I, I feel really she bad. She might want to wait till he swears in. Cause then she can officially become president. It'll be, easy. It'll be a lot easier for her. Yeah. Cause if she yeah. does it before, then technically <laughs> she's not up. Breaking news. Biden falls while walking off stage after inauguration. Dude, you know, Biden is like, there's no way I'm putting Hillary as VP. I want to live. I want to live. Yeah. Like even oh, he knows. So even, oh, yeah. What a crazy, crazy time. Man, and all the crazy stuff. Speaking of this, like we don't really have much from Ghislaine Maxwell yet. Um, little bits of stuff. Did you did you read some of the transcripts where they're in, in the case where they're interviewing various people? And there, this one girl's pointing out, yeah, Bill Clinton was there. Yes, there were young girls there. Yes, da 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 Like, think about how like, if that was any other time, any other president, 
people would be like, he was what? Like right. we'd be, people would be freaking out, but like, right. it's kind of like common knowledge. Like, I mean, he's been on the flight logs for however long and nobody's flipping out. Like this is just bonkers to me, man. Right. Well, yeah. hasn't Trump been there as well? Yeah, he has. That's, I, trust me. I'm not a fan of Trump either. On right. Right. Yeah, I know. Here's, here's the thing that is intriguing. And I, I'm still, there's all kinds of stuff out there about Trump that look super bad. I think he's awful. Don't, this is no defense of him. He was smart enough, though, that after 2008, he quit hanging out with Epstein. Now, that doesn't make him innocent. It makes him smarter. Because 2008 is, of course, when Epstein gets, you know, pleads guilty to, well, I think they called it, uh, what is it, prostitution of a minor? And I'm like, that's child rape. Like, that's, right. why don't we not call it what it is? Like, he's a child rapist. And wherever he is in whatever bunker right now, because I'm not even sure he's dead, like he's a child rapist, right? And so why do we use this, these like, you know, fuzzy, even with the Ghislaine Maxwell stuff, they said something similar. Like she had, you know, had uh, coerced sex with minors. And I'm like, she's raped children. Right. That's like, that's what it is. And so anyway, I, I always saw any, anything after 2008 is absolutely legally, you had, you knew that. Epstein was a you know convicted child rapist. So I think about so now I look at anybody who hung up with, out with him after that. Um, Bill Gates didn't even connect with him till after that. Ooh. Christy Te- Chrissy Teigen was like buddies at with him after that. All these others that like either remained close or started relationship with him. And I'm like, man, I would never like if I found out my neighbor was a child rapist, like. I would never, like, I wouldn't do business with him. I wouldn't go on trips with him. I would, like, I would basically be waiting until God struck lightning on the guy, right? Like, so all these people that hung out with him after, and Bill Clinton especially, I'm like, it's, you knew what you were doing. Like, you're complicit at the at the very minimum. Right. And, and I, in most cases, probably guilty of doing the same. Anyway, that's topic number four. Done. In the books. We nailed it. <laughs> Man, yeah. I don't I don't even know what to tell you. It was funny last week, the reason why we didn't do a podcast. I was on vacation. Yeah. And we were in uh Lake Las Vegas. That's where we go every summer. Ooh. Freaking hot, man. 111 yeah. degrees, 111 to cool. 115. So just like when the wind hits you, it's a blow dryer. You're like, "Oh my gosh, dude, it's a blow dryer." Yeah. What other place in the world do you not want the breeze? I know, right? (laughs) Well, here was the funniest part, man. So Lake Las Vegas is in Henderson. So it's right next to, obviously, Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, Henderson, I don't know if it's a county or it's a city. I I have no idea. But Henderson closed down the spas or the, you know, the, the jacuzzis. Hmm. So you couldn't go into a jacuzzi because COVID can spread in the jacuzzi it can't spread in the pool so pools were open jacuzzis were closed this is ridiculous this is the dumbest thing i'd ever seen and my wife was like well i bet it's because they're like you can't be six feet apart in a jacuzzi and that's what they're thinking is six feet apart in a jacuzzi like can't you trust people to decide for themselves the risk they're going to take so we waited until Sunday night, which was the last, last night we were there. And, uh, and then my family went and jumped in the jacuzzi because we're like, what are they going to do? Kick us out now? Fine. Yeah. We're leaving. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it was just, it was, it was ridiculous. Man. They still had valet parking on the strip, which I thought was kind of funny. So we valet yeah. parked because it's like, it's too freaking hot to go park my car and then walk two miles yeah. into the, into the wow. uh, stores and whatnot. And then um, all of the uh, all of the benches in the malls had these signs on them saying the bench is closed due to COVID nineteen. Do you think that stopped a single person from sitting on the bench? <laughs> of course, we were just everyone sitting on the bench, sitting on the signs, and it was just like this is ridiculous, man. And at least the mall was like, we don't care. Like clearly, our governor made us put these signs here, so we're putting the signs here. But do whatever you want. Yeah. And there were no security, like, going around kicking people off or anything like that. They were just yeah. like, you know, whatever. And then everywhere you went, inside every single store, you had to have a mask on. Yeah. It was ridiculous. That's, that's unfortunately the way it is here now. You is wear it? A mask and everything. You got to have the mask? 
Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the language is fuzzy. It's like going anywhere public. And I don't think they've really clearly outlined, like, is it just outside in the public? Is it whatever? Um, and so some of the, like the County sheriff was like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna enforce any of this until you get some things on the books to, you know, right. That was our, uh, our governor made it. So anytime you're outside in public, you got to have a mask on. That's terrible. We, our, our sheriff has said, I'm not enforcing that. I'm Good. not the mask police. We're not going to enforce it. And I guess that led to the governor basically telling Orange County, we're not going to give you money because your sheriff's not going to enforce our illegal edicts. You know, but whatever. It's fine. We'll not give you money. We'll just quit, quit paying, uh, paying our taxes. We went to Huntington Beach uh, Sunday. In the morning, we went down to the uh, the park there, and um, there was like one person with a mask on. We were like, yep, these are our people. These are our people right here. Orange County basically telling everyone, forget you. We're not wearing a mask. That's what I'm talking about. We're at the beach. Forget it. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. beautiful, man. It's beautiful. It's good stuff. Oh, man. Well, so, and speaking of what's going on in your state, man, we know all the churches that are that are facing like – lockdown whatever water shut off suppose like that's what's being threatened and but like old john macarthur man he's, did you hear about how he opened up his the sermon no he's uh welcome to grace church peaceful protest <laughs> that's how he started off the sermon <laughs> that is <laughs> that awesome beautiful. that is beautiful especially like he was leaning so far on the on the other side of things where it was like we got to obey the government romans 13 whatever and now he's like, wait a minute, uh, the, the government's not supposed to tell the church how to run church. What the heck? We, what are we doing? And so right. like, and he's so he's, he's he's where he needs to be on the thing now. So, but he's not we, the only one. I told our pastor um, very very politely, very nicely. I was like, look, just so you know, we're done with virtual church. We're not doing this anymore. And I'm like, look, I understand the position that you're in because you got people who are freaking out. You got people who are like, how dare you? You know, meet. And how dare you do a, a, a song? How dare you? I mean, I get it. I, and I in no way, you know this, because I work with pastors. I in no way, I'm like trying to guilt you into anything or make you feel bad about the decisions that you're making, because I get it. Like, you got all kinds of pressure on you. But just so you know, we're done with virtual church. Yeah. We're not doing it anymore. Yeah. We need a community. If that means I got to start having a church in my house, then we're going to a house church. Yeah, because I'm done with this. Hey, let me know if you want to start a house church. I can help with that. I don't um, want to start a house church. I'm just saying just I, will, <laughs> I will do it if I have to. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm with you. I'm actually having sterner conversations with pastors than you are because I, I did actually did a sermon two weeks ago on what the church is supposed to do. And there's something like, depending on how you count, like 47 commands of one another's in the church. Mm. Most of them involve physically being together. It's like bearing one another's burdens. It's taking communion together. Like we're supposed to take communion. Think about how many churches have neglected breaking bread together. Right. And, you know, we're supposed to lay hands and pray for one another. We're supposed to do all these things that like just involve being together. Not that you can't do good things online, but I just gave a sermon. And then I was like, man, all these things God commands. For crying out loud, Hebrews 10, it's straight commanding you meet together right? Like it just commands it. And so I'm like, so I looked for all of the exceptions to this in the scripture. I can't find any. <laughs> and I said, we've got a couple of implied no, no, ones. No, 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 no. There's the, the COVID-19 exception in That's scripture. Right. <laughs> I, I told, I'm like, you know, if you're si be, sending out a missionary, sure. How's the missionary going to come to church when a church doesn't exist where he's going? There's, if you're in jail, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, we can maybe sort of take the quarantine laws in the Old Testament, which was only for the sick, and say that the sick person, maybe you could quarantine. But I'm like, in the New Testament, we're supposed to lay hands and pray for the sick. So I'm not even sure that applies, but maybe I'll give you that one. I didn't know what to say, but all of my pastor friends, I'm like, dude, are you going to really neglect the, what we call the means of grace in Reformed right. Church? Like, you're going to neglect that. You're not even going to give the option. Like totally, like if you need to say, hey man, if you need to stay home, whatever, like give, man, make it free. But dude, you're not even going to give people an option to come to your church to be right. ministered. And um, man, I'm watching the, like we had bad stuff happening around here because people are on lockdown. Abuses rates are on the, on the rise. 
some dude suicide is way up suicide murder suicide we had just in the uh the town next door to ours some dude murdered his wife and children killed himself the whole thing and i'm like yeah i'm not gonna say that that's all because of covid lockdown but i'm gonna tell you it freaking does not help right because I, I mean how many times we've heard the stories i've talked to people that were suicidal and said i was gonna do it i went home with a plan and somebody showed up at my house just to say hi and I decided not to do it that day, and I'm still alive because of that. And then guess what? You don't get to do that in COVID. You don't have the random guy showing up to remind that person that somebody cares about them. Um, you don't have the guy showing up being like, dude, you've been really harsh on your kids. What's going on? Like, you don't have the things that calm people down. So abuse is up. Depression is up. Murder, <laughs> murder. I don't want to say murder is up in the same way because people aren't interacting with each other. But um, suicide is up, and it's just bad. Um, yeah. So that's unless you're in Chicago, bad. then murder is way up. <laughs> well, shoot, yeah, it's. <laughs> Did you see yeah. they like shut down the city? They like put all of the bridges up. They uh, shut down all the tunnels. They uh, completely locked down the city after this last weekend. Oh my gosh! I did completely not see that. locked it down. Yeah. It was that bad. Yeah, because those gun laws are working so well, dude. That has to be the safest city in the world with their gun laws. Oh yeah. So safe, super, super safe. But anyway, back to your, uh, your church talk, you know, one of the things that, that I was reminded of, and, uh, and this is one of the things I passed on to my pastor is I just said, you know, as you know, I do the church planner podcast with Peyton Jones and Peyton always says that, uh, there's three purposes to church for us to hear from God, for God to hear from us and from us to hear from each other. It's pretty, it's good. Yeah. When all we do is hear from the pastor. Yeah, we are hearing from God, but that's it. There's no singing at our church. At least there hasn't been until they literally just started meeting Saturday nights outside in the parking lot. And so now we sing again, but it's like, there's no corporate prayer. So there's no God hearing from us. We can't talk to each other. You know, we're not supposed to even, you know, really say hi to each other, you know, cause that's all part of the COVID laws, not the church. And I was just like, we're done, man. We're done. We're done yeah. with this. And me, the guy who hates I people, I yeah. hate people. I don't <laughs> even like being around them. When, when the guy who does not like, like, like the fellowship time you try to avoid, even you are acknowledging we need this. I know. Yeah. Really. I, I acknowledge it for my wife. She needs it more than I do. Right, right, right. You need it too, Pete. It's uh, commanded. Well, it is. And I, I've never really been a great Christian. Let's just <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> All right. No, man, but, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on all this, man. It's, um, yeah, well, we, we're, we're seeing definitely some churches that are getting shaken up over this. Cause they're like, man, even the ones that are opening up, but then you still can't actually fellowship. And it's like, yeah. ah, it's still not church. I actually will tell people, I'm like, it's still not church. If your church isn't teaching the word of God accurately, implementing church discipline correctly, allowing for the use of gifts and the teaching, the word, all the, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, man, Hey, you can call it what it wants. It's it's not a church. Like I mean, it's maybe it's sort of like a church, but like you're not doing everything the church is supposed to do. At what point are you just not a church anymore? Right. Yeah. And um, I don't want to be too harsh on that because yeah, sure, probably you're still kind of a church, but like let's not pretend like you're doing everything it's supposed to do. And um, yeah. So that's. And I and I just I don't envy the position that our our pastors are in. Like our church is part of a bigger church, and so he's got to deal with his senior pastor and it's a, you know, it's a pretty big church and you know, there are people there who are freaking out over COVID-19. I mean, we've got them in our church too, but so I don't, I don't envy his position, right? Cause he, yeah. it's not like he gets to set the course and go, look, this is what we're doing. He's, he's got to like be a part. And that's why I said what I said to him with grace. I was like, look, man, we'll, we'll start coming to the Saturday thing. Um, if we got to do a house church, we're going to do a house church, but we're, we're done with this, man. This is, yeah. this is, this is not right. We're not doing yeah, it anymore. Good for you guys, man. Yeah. I know the situation these guys are in. I'm in the same situation, but we're, we made the call to keep meeting or to re-meet. We took a little break there in the early stages when things were still kind of unknown, but, and we were meeting for a while. It's been so much better to meet than not meet, but we lost people over it. I mean, sure. we had people get really mad, but I'm like, I, my response was like, I'm going to obey Hebrews 10. Um, you guys do what you want, but like, I'm going to have to answer to God for this later. And I want to do yeah. what he has commanded me to do. And I'm, I'm going to obey God rather than men here. 
Um, so anyway, that's, and it's uh, a tough position to be in because it is. You know what happens if people do get sick because die, yeah. of your church? They got yeah. it at. I mean, so I get it, right? Oh, I, I totally, I totally get acknowledge. It. Well, that's why I'm pretty clear to say, like, listen, everybody, make your own call. Yeah, we're, we're gonna meet. Um, we want you to be with us. We're, we're providing Zoom at the same time. So if you need to be on there, praise the Lord, go for it. Um, but then I also challenge some where I'm like, some of you, you're lazy. You're using this as an excuse to not come. Right. You know, like the 29-year-old who's perfectly healthy, has no issues. You, come on, man. Like you, you really, your risk is so minimal. Right. You can be here. And um, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, interesting times right now. So, you want to talk guns a little bit? I do. I do. Yeah. So, um, let let me just share before you get into what you were going to share on this. I read an article this morning. Oh, man. I think I closed it. Man, that sucks. It was on the uh, Caltech Sub 2000. Oh, yeah. They came out with uh, with a version that has a suppressor built into it. Oh, yes. How nice would that be? Now, of course, oh, yeah. those are illegal in California. You can't have suppressors. You got to go through the ATF to get it. So even though the barrel is long enough, uh, it's not a short barrel rifle. It's suppressed. So you got to go through the ATF. It's awesome. I, all I'm doing is I'm looking at that thing going, I got to move to a free state and I got to buy do. some some weapons that I'm not allowed to buy in California. Yeah. You, come on over, man. We'll give, actually, Lake Erie Arms just got a new run of, we have a whole wall we call our fun gun wall or our cool gun wall. And it's that kind of stuff always on there. In fact, the sub 2000 has been up there. Um, but man, I'm just looking up as we're talking here, this in- integrally suppressed sub 2000. That's not bad. That was already such a, a tiny little barrel. This is kind of a nice with that rail extended all the way in. All right, man. This looks all right. I like one it. of my buddies. His favorite gun is his sub 2000. He listens to the podcast. In fact, he's like, yeah. I love the sub 2000. It's a it's cool awesome. little gun. Yeah. That's a, but that's, that's a fun fact, the only gun. reason why he has Glock mags is because of the, the sub 2000. <laughs> that's a fun, that's a fun little gun, man. I, I, I actually really recommend those. We, well, they fold, fold up so tiny. I'm trying to get a read on how much longer this one is. It's almost the same length, man. There's I think not it much is. sticking. Yeah, that's this is not bad. Well, and so and that fits in a little tiny bag. Like, I mean, it you know, it comes in a little carry bag. Like, dude, that's this is awesome. You get that suppressed, you'd have fun all day long with that. That's what I'm thinking. Cause see, you know, I got the uh the Ruger PCC, which I love and nine millimeter, uses Glock yep. mags. Yep. That thing barely even moves when you shoot it. And I'm just thinking, if that was suppressed. How quiet would that be? That'd be awesome. Yeah. So much I love it. to having a suppressor, man. You're, you're, uh, you're getting rid of the, the movement, uh, right? You're, it's, it's almost like, oh, it's better, in my opinion, than having a compensator on there. You're hot, you are legitimately keeping your muzzle flash hidden. Your noise volume you know, is way down. You have so many benefits to the thing. Um, the only negative is if it's longer, <laughs> Right. And it's sticking out. Like I have like this big 18 inch barrel. If I was to put a suppressor on that, (laughs) it's the longest freaking thing. Right. But it's a lot of fun, man. See, if I lived in a free state, in fact, I was telling my buddy, my buddy just moved to Oklahoma. He bought a farm in Oklahoma and he's a gun guy, carry guy. And I was like, okay, you have to go buy yourself an AR pistol and 300 blackout because you couldn't get one in California. And now you can, you can get it. And he was like, well, send me a link to one. And he's a Springfield guy too. So I'm like, here, check oh, out yeah. the Springfield. I mean, that's nice is, ones. But if I lived in a free state, that would probably be one of the first things would be an AR pistol, 300 blackout, suppressed. Oh, yeah. You can do a lot of. That would be my in home rifle right there. That's, Technically, that's pistol, in home pistol. In home, in home, yeah. Good. Home yeah, protection the, pistol. It's good fun. Well, and Springfield makes some pretty nice ones. Like, I know that the like the gun snooty guys are like, yeah, Springfield, it's whatever. It's for the right. the guys who don't want to build. Uh, yeah, I recognize you can build something cooler, but that the whole Springfield uh, series of ARs, man, the pistols and everything, the Saint, like it's good stuff. It looks my cool. first AR was the Springfield Saint, and it's still yep. to this day my favorite AR is the Saint. Yep. I love it. It's great. Yeah. 
I'm even though I've bad. modified it to no end, I'm like, still, I don't know that it's any better now modified than it was when it was brand spanking new. So you remind me, uh, was it two weeks ago? I told you guys about putting in the Fostech Echo Sport Trigger right. for my buddy. Um, I'm, if it's all right, he sent me a video of him dumping a mag with that thing. And um, and now keep in mind, this is a binary trigger. This is not fully auto. Um, I'm going to see if I can bring this up here and just let you guys hear. Would that be all right? Yeah. Hear how fast this thing goes. Come on. Where's my, where's my video? All right, here we go. Ready? Volume is up. That was 29 rounds. Dude, are you kidding me? That was 29 rounds, and that is that is semi-auto. One more time. We'll let everybody hear. Dude, that sounds like full auto. Yeah, it's a, you can actually do it faster than full auto. Yeah. That's my, that's my good buddy, Herschel. <laughs> and Herschel knows how to put rounds down range. He said it took him a couple of times out to get that rhythm down. Right. Because there's a, there's a rhythm. You got to go far that, enough like, each way. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to get it just right. But man, I got it. One for three hundred bucks. Two ninety nine is what those run. And I, like I said, I don't think that's legal in California. That's the reason why I, I don't, I don't, I don't participate in such things. <laughs> so, so now I know that no matter what, you wouldn't do this. But we have a saying in West Virginia. We say that you know moonshining is is legal everywhere. If you're not a little bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not recommending use of that word or of telling that to people or of doing something like that. So just, just acknowledging that that's a saying that may have driven me to do things that I shouldn't do. <laughs> I, uh, I was uh, talking with a friend of mine from, from college the other day. She's out in West Virginia and uh, she's trying to get all of her California conservative friends like me to move out to West Virginia. So I had to do a little research on West Virginia. I'm like, I don't know the gun laws in West Virginia. I was like, this is next to my heart. This is where I need to be. Yeah. Apparently Con- West Virginia. Yeah. yeah. I, I know on uh, secondhand information, uh, someone that was being, someone very close to me was being threatened by some people in West Virginia and they are, you know, it's all the drama or whatever. So they call the sheriff and accuse him of brandishing a gun when he hadn't. Right. And, um, <laughs> and so the sheriff's like, ah, don't worry. We know they're crazy. If you shoot them, just make sure you drag them in the house. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that's, that's West Virginia, man. It's good times. That good is times. not California. No, nope. no, it's good times in West Virginia, man. We, we've got, we know, we, the, we know our state motto is Montani Semper Liberi, which means mountaineers are always free. <laughs> and, and we mean it, man, whether it be moonshine or, you know, and what, and you got to look up some of this stuff. You know, we had an actual war with the mines, like a literal war with fully automatic machine guns. We had a battle like they had to essentially create the state troopers in West Virginia to handle the miners because we know how to literally go to war and um, yeah, good times. Like, uh, man, what's it called? The battle of Blair mountain. Look up battle of Blair mountain, man. We got, we know how to throw down, man. Yeah. And man, those dudes out there on their crystal meth, dude, they won't even have to sleep 30 days. They'll just be shooting at you. They'll never go to sleep. Never even close their eyes, man. The feds do not want to mess with West Virginia. That is funny, man. <laughs> then what happened to Virginia? Isn't Virginia oh, the one that's passing like all the laws like yeah. crazy? Did we not talk about this? Um, because there, we there's there's a whole thing behind this. I don't think we've got the chance to talk about this. I don't know if we did. So let's just acknowledge two things because Virginia is a newcomer in an old reality in states with large cities, right? So what you have in like uh, New York, New York is you know dairy farmers and guys like me that just want to live their lives in freedom. But you have New York city that basically controls what's happening in New York. So they have terrible draconian gun laws in New York, right? Even though most of the state is reasonably conservative. California is not far off. There's a whole bunch of people in California. I know you've got more liberalism in general, but there's a lot of people that live in rural areas of California that want to have their guns, want to live their lives, want to be free. But you got a few cities that control everything, right? 
in Virginia, you had a little bit of a swing state, but you had a lot of generally conservative people who want to live their lives, have their guns. But as the area around D.C. has grown like crazy, uh, Loudoun County, Virginia, some of these other counties in Virginia have just become these like huge you know, like actually like 90% of the internet traffic in the world goes through that little county in Virginia. And there's all kinds of tech and whatever people that lived in, you know, like Simi Valley, whatever, Silicon Valley, California have come over to DC to be the little mini Silicon Valley when they brought their voting over there as well. And so the state has very rapidly swung to the left. And so that's why you have, you know, when is the last time you saw any state make such sweeping gun laws. And then you had the citizens coming out twice to march. Um, That is the result of a city with, you know, know, this large urban populace really swinging everything. And so that's the the rest of the state is pissed off about it. Right. Um, So, which actually brings me not to take too much on this, but this brings to the kind of next reality. If things go down, we're going to be talking about an urban versus rural conflict in our country. And um, there's there's more on that. We, I won't talk more about it, but the tension that's building ultimately, I would say, is more urban versus rural than it is state to state or even necessarily Republican versus Democrat. Um, and so something to keep our eye on. Some of that, I, I don't think it would be wise for us to talk about in detail here, but we're, we're just watching the writing on the wall. I mean, I kind of got a couple of conversations with dudes who like they're they live in this world and they're mm. they're they're and they're like this is what we see happening man um and so and <laughs> they're living in urban areas saying like we need to get we're like they're trying to buy land in west virginia um interesting stuff yeah, yeah dude yeah yeah anyway um yeah. what's funny is i never thought to me west virginia is too far to the east like i i never would have thought that i would even consider a place that east yeah Yeah. you know there's all kinds of things about the geography of west virginia though that make it unique unlike almost any other state really so um there's obviously similarities whereas like you might have um parts of virginia and parts of kentucky tennessee are hilly regions right but then you also have flat regions in there as well west virginia it's almost all just hilly terrain really which means yeah i mean it's it's we call it i mean they're technically lead, like not technically mountains. They're big hills, but like you have like there's no straight. You get into West Virginia, it's up and down, and it's around mountains. There's no straight way to get anywhere, and so you have people that live up in these hollers. People think I'm I'm exaggerating. People will live up in a holler and spend their entire life there. Like I knew kids that had not left the county that we were in in their whole lives. They'd never been outside of the county, like, and they'll live up in a holler, and that's just it, right? And so it's, there's this weird kind of isolation that happens because of the geography of West Virginia. And it's both good and bad. It's why you have backwoods people that hate anybody not from the holler, but you also have some like Southern hospitality in some of those. And if you need to go and hide in the mountains, you can. Um, it's a wonderful, I love it, man. I miss it. I, I want to go back. What took you to Ohio? Uh, well, I married a Buckeye. And then God called me to be a missionary to these filthy heathens in this state. Um, and so that's why God has me here. Cause a- any day, if the, if he gave me a word to go back, I would be back tonight. Like I would, we would pack up the truck. We would go to West Virginia. We'd hook up the whiskey still. We'd start reloading ammo. And that's where I would live my life. But the Lord has said that the good news of the gospel needs to be here in Northeast Ohio. Um, and so here I am. And, um, yeah. Every time, every time we're out somewhere as a family and people are like, where are you guys from? And Christy's like, Oh, we're from Ohio. I'm like, not me. I'm from West Virginia. Nice. <laughs> like I still, I've been living here like, I don't know, 15 years. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm from West Virginia and that's where I, my heart belongs. But yeah. What's I, funny I, to me is I would never take ownership of California if I got to leave here. Oh people yeah. You're like, where are you from here? What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean where am I from? Yeah. I'm not from California. Oh. I would never take ownership of California. Yeah. But see, West Virginia loves different, man. Like, so like, you know, um, what's her name? Uh, well, actually, we'll tell the story. Like, I know all of the counties of West Virginia. I can sing them in a song, all 55 of them. Who, who in any state 
knows that. I know our state bird and our state fish. I know our state tree. I know our state flower. Like you go on and on and on. I know the state song. I mean, do you know your state song? I don't know. Like we got a sure state song. sure it has song. to do with COVID-19. I can sing it, right? And I didn't realize until I left West Virginia that like, hey, nobody else loves their state like we do. And so um, I don't know if you've ever seen Jennifer Garner on like um, one of the late night talk shows. Jennifer Garner is like our queen. Um, and like, by the way, like, I didn't know she was from West Virginia. Oh, she's from West Virginia. She'll tell you about it. Um, on our shows, long story. Like I actually, I didn't ever know her personally, but she knew my granddad and my uncle, whatever, but we would like see her at Kroger, like, you know, and, but like, you don't freak out. You're like, Oh, Hey man, that's cool. Like she'd be in sweatpants at Kroger. That's West Virginia, man. When A-list celebrities come and hang out, Kroger's our grocery store, by the way, come and hang out at Kroger and they just nod and say hi, because they know they are as, as redneck as you. That's, it's a, man, it's just a magical state, man. Come and live in West Virginia. There's a reason why we call it almost heaven. Yeah. That's so funny. And well, it makes it even cooler, man. We, man, we seceded off of West or off of regular Virginia because of their freaking slavery. We're like, we're not going to have any part of that. Good stuff, man. Anyway. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. Do we have any other gun talk? Um, well, man, we, well, we talked about the trigger again. We talked about your Caltech. Um, hmm. You know what? I, I got one other thing and it's just really a, a, a reiteration. Uh, I am having more conversations with people in, uh, military background, current military, uh, watching what's going on in the world. And they're starting to say, make sure you have a fighting weapon. Uh, they're like, e not your hunting rifle, not your whatever. You need something that you can throw rounds down range that you can do what you need to with. And um, that's just, I'm just going to reiterate that. Like, I know we talk about a lot of what we're talking about is just fun, crazy stuff, you know, or terrible, crazy stuff. And we talk a lot about concealed carry, right? You need to have your fighting weapon. You probably ought to have a sidearm that's a nine millimeter so that you can get the ammo easily. And you need something that will shoot 5.56 five, and 223. It needs to be able to take AR 15 mags. It needs to be semi auto. And so, um, just reiterating that, actually, just listen to uh, Red Pilled America. Uh, they have a, an episode called Insurrection that I'd highly recommend reading, where they, they do kind of a, a, a background on the Rodney King riots. Um, and really get into how everything happened, what went down, what happened to society, what and how quickly things kind of devolve. Super interesting, worth listening to. I don't even know if I agree with them on everything, but they have some really good points. But one of the guys in there that was in the um, uh, the National Guardsman that helped quell everything, and he's like, uh, civilians need to have AR-15s. Uh, he's like, he actually pointed out, he's like, you know, the police were from somewhere else. He's like, the National Guardsmen that were called out were actually from the neighborhoods. Most right. of them were pretty glad to see us because it was their neighbors coming out to stop rioting. But he's like, if only my neighbors had had AR-15s, we, we they would have been able to do something before we even had to get there. So just reiterating that, if you don't have yourself an AR-15 get you, or an AK, but you probably ought to get your AR. Not that I think one platform is better than the other, but... The, the prominence oh, come on. of rounds. I definitely think one platform is better than the other. All right. All right. Here's, here's what I think. I think that they are unfairly trying to put it. They're unfairly put in the same category. I, I actually would agree believe, with that. Yeah. I actually believe the AK fulfills a slightly different purpose and should be treated differently as such. Um, the AR-15 generally, not always, because I recognize they there's some manufacturers make some really accurate AKs. The AR in general is more accurate, Right. It's shooting a different kind of round for crying right. out loud. You look at those two rounds together, maybe a 300 blackout is a closer right. Very comparison much so. to a 762 by 39 millimeter. And so then we can talk all day long, but the, the customary round for the AR-15, I, I would just say is in a separate category. There's so many reasons why Eugene Stoner designed that gun instead of, you know, what we were shooting out of the M1 Garand. You got to you, know? you think about the AR-15 is insanely well put together. Oh, like, yeah. It's everywhere where you, you, you slap the, the bolt to, I mean, all of it. It's like, how did this guy put this gun together? This thing is amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, man, I hope I don't have COVID. 
<laughs> you do. You got the oh. COVID. Yeah. Sorry. Hopefully I don't spread it through the internet. Um, it's from no, your church. It's from meeting with people at your church. <laughs> right, right. Um, no, the, there's so much elegance to the AR-15. It, like even just looking at it, like it's, if you, if you take, if you open up an AK or anything on the Kalashnikov platform, it looks like, I mean, it's basically a cap gun on the inside. Like it is the same functionality as a cap gun. I'm sure not the same. Like I know I'm being over, but like you look at what's going on in an AR. There's just so much more. It's beautiful. It, it's, it's an elegant piece of I like the, the, the main thing that I don't like about the AK is that the bolt doesn't lock back when you're done with yeah. the magazine. Yeah. And that bothers me because why isn't my gun shooting? Right. Oh, wait, I got to drop the mag out. Well, what if that wasn't the reason why your gun was shooting? At least on the AR tilted to the side. Do you see the bolt locked back? There's nothing in there. That's not the problem. You're out of ammunition. Slap another one in. Yep. Well, not to mention, you know, with an AR, like once you're empty and it's open, you throw another one in there, you slap the side of the thing and you are to going go. to town, man. So with the AK, it's, it's not quite the same. Let's rock you know? that in properly, you know, and let's pull it again. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, which is oh, yeah. nuts. Like I do personally believe that the, the bullet itself is superior on the AK. I can agree with that. Yeah. Cause it's so much bigger. Yeah. But the, the firearm itself isn't as good. And then when you start looking at like all of the different countries of origin, if you will, on your AK, I mean, it's not like you can interchange parts easily. Like on most ARs, if it's a mil spec, you know, you could take this one from that one, slap it in, boom, you're, you're back with, in business. With minimal differences. Minimal differences. You're exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, and that, yeah. Oh, oh, Eugene. Stoner, and you can man. drill the third hole so much easier on the air. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's, that's, I don't know anything about that. Me neither. Me neither. No, 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 no um, idea. No idea. I'm in California. Yeah, here in California, you don't know anything about that. You've never even seen a gun. Um, the, uh, there was something. Oh, have you, I don't know if you ever watched Grand Thumb, but uh, he did. Grand Thumb is great. Like, dude is a, is a, is a full tilt, you know, operator and just has really good basics, like on you know, what you're going to do with your chest rig, like, and he's just a fun guy. And the, the joke is that at the end of every episode, he gives some like fatherly advice. So everybody's been calling him granddaddy. Um, so on father's day, he's like, I don't know, he's like 30 years old. And so like on father's day, everybody sends him notes. Anyway, grand thumb had a dude from, um, Man, he was some he was some Irish dude who'd done I don't remember who all he'd done work with, and then somebody else. And he just has these three uh, you know, full scale, you know, special operations guys talk about their rigs. And um one of the things that came up, because it gets thrown out every now and then, is that the AR was not designed to kill, it was designed to wound. So everybody says. And this Irish guy is like, I killed a lot of people. <laughs> like, like he's just like, I've killed a lot of people with that gun. And so he's like, he's like, I don't care what it was designed for. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's just face facts, man. There's a lot of velocity coming out behind that five, five, six round. And sure, maybe it is not designed to make a big hole, but it, it, it kills people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, you know? I don't want to get shot by one. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah. I don't want to get shot by anything. Shoot. I don't want to get shot by a BB gun. <laughs> I, well, I've been shot by a BB gun. I got shot in the face by a BB gun. Oh, man. That hurt, oh. man. Oh, my gosh, dude. That hurt. Oh, yeah, you don't want that. I was crying. I was a little kid. I was at a summer camp, Christian summer camp. You know, the, we got to take BB guns up to the range. And I remember this particular year, the guy that was in charge didn't give everyone the safety speech. And I was like, oh, this is not good. Not so good. we go walking up there. When we're walking back, guys are literally shooting their guns on the way back. Kids. I mean, they're kids, right? Yeah. And somebody shoots. It hits a tree, bounces off the tree, hits me right here, right in the jawline. Oh, man. I was crying so bad in front of all the girls at the camp. I was like, oh, it hurt so bad. I mean, I don't even know if it broke the skin, but, dude, you get smacked in the face with a BB. It hurts, it hurts, man. 
Well, yeah. and at first you don't know, like there's a sting. You don't know, does this break skin? Does I have, well, that's the thing is it stung so bad. I, I was sure it was embedded in my jaw, but it wasn't. But yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Moral of the story, try not to get shot, kids. Oh, which reminds me, as we're talking about this, everybody needs to get their, uh, everybody needs to make sure that they've got some type of a trauma kit. And it is cheaper to make that off of stuff you buy off of Amazon uh, than it is to buy one outright. But everybody should have chest seal, quick clot, Israeli bandage, tourniquet, man. And you can put that together for like 60, 80 bucks. A really nice kit. So you should put together on. a little list of everything they should have. I and like then send it to idea. me because I need to buy one. You know what? We should do that. I'm thinking like a lot of these guys that like, I mean, there's some great companies out there making really great trauma kits. Like, and I'm, I'm all for it. Like if you want to go and pay the 200 bucks or 130 bucks to buy a trauma kit, go for it, man. But like, I see now like, you could put one of those things together, turn around and sell it. And you have a pretty solid 30% profit margin. I'm thinking, like yeah, we'll, we'll have to put that list together. Anyway, we've talked about so many things today. Sorry for the <laughs> rambling. So, right. It's what happens when we take a week off. I know too many things to cover. Yeah. Cool Good stuff, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time and you want to give Lake Erie their plug. Sure. Hey, yeah, everybody, uh, check out Lake Erie Arms. As we have mentioned, we got a new gun wall full of cool stuff. Uh, we also have our stock of handguns in, all that kind of stuff. We have 556 and 223 ammo, and it's not crazy jacked up prices. So come on out and get some ammo. It's just a little bit jacked up. Just, just yeah. a little. You know what? There was a slight price increase at the very beginning of COVID. We've kept it solid. You can get a box of, uh, get a box of 223 for 10 bucks. Wow. So it's not crazy. I mean, it's not as cheap as, you know, back before when you get it for like seven dollars but i'd rather do that than not have, have nothing ammo. yeah so yeah so come on out and also we got all of our classes are concealed carry we've got a gun care class and um we're working on maybe just maybe getting us an ar-15 build class for those of you who don't, don't do it yet so um we'll see that's 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 secret don't tell anybody so both of you listening don't tell anybody um all right yeah that's all we got check out learms.net all right, guys. We'll talk to you all later. Take care, everybody. Right. Bye-bye. Right, You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.